Hi, I'm John from Fargo 3D Printing here at CES 2016 in the Raise 3D booth with Joseph from Toy Builder Labs. Uh, they are partners with Raise 3D. And Joseph, uh, I know the Raise 3D printer has generated a lot of interest, had a very successful Kickstarter. So just tell us a little bit more about the Raise 3D printer and what sets it apart from, uh, from other machines. Sure. Well, so uh, back in November in 2015, uh, we had about 348 backers for the Raise 3D N Series campaign. They raised uh, almost $450,000 and the uh, first 50 units uh, were promised to ship in December 2015 and they shipped and uh, so we got a number of people that already started to receive theirs and uh, more are on boats and on their way to the ultimate destination. So the N series, uh, it consists of the N2 Plus which is the 1212 by 24 and then the N2 which is 12 by 12 by 12. That's the main machine that everybody's really excited about. Uh, and then we got a small one over there which is the N1 which is uh, 8 by 8 by 8. So the nice thing about the uh, N-Series is that it's got really nice machined aluminum frame and a aluminum uh, upper structure which holds all the motion mechanics. So it's a very rigid printer. And that allows this printer to do a really nice clean print down to 10 micron layers, right? And uh, on top of that, uh, this has a UI, a touch panel UI, which uh, uh, makes it really easy to use. It's got a battery backup so that if I were to actually pull the power cord right here, and oh, wow. now the you, printer's off. You just we, pulled we, we it. Just, we just pulled the power cord on it. I'm going to plug it back in in about uh, two minutes or so. It'll restart uh, and uh, we'll reheat the nozzle and resume printing. We've done that several times already in the show. Uh, that is and impressive. And so later on you can take a video of it restarting. I, I have to hit the restart, but, uh, continue button there. But, um, but yeah, this is one of the greatest features about this uh, printer. Um, the price point, $3,300 for the N2+, $2,500 for the N2, $1,800 for the N1. It's a fantastic machine. People who have seen it in person have been absolutely gaga over it. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think it's going to do well. Okay, so we've got the pricing. What sort of availability is, is on this? I know you said you're working on fulfilling all of the Kickstarter backers, printers, any sort of general public availability planned yeah. yet? So uh, the first 50 units shipped and then the rest of the Kickstarter production is going on right now. Uh, we're expecting that to go into February and into March probably. But uh, soon after that, these machines will become more available to the general uh, sales. Um, we're actually at a point, uh, Rails 3D is taking pre-orders right now for them and offering some discounts for people who are taking pre-orders right now. Um, and then uh, as the machines reach the final point of selling, then those discounts go away. Uh, but they are in production and uh, by March or so, uh, they should be available to everybody. Well, very cool. This it's always nice to see a Kickstarter printer that is it, it's not it's not vaporware it's not not vaporware it's actually here actually shipping. So Joseph, thanks again. I sure. uh, appreciate the time and have a good rest of the show. Thanks a lot. Okay. Yeah. So uh, John, uh, while we were talking a little earlier, I deliberately pulled the plug on the N2 here, and then put the part back on. And uh, after a little bit of time here, it uh, is in the uh, screen here where we're able to recover the current task. So I'm going to tap on that now. And now it's going to start reading the files back from where it was uh, working. And it will parse through it and get to the resuming point. Uh, and it's going to reheat the uh, extruder and basically uh, get itself ready to continue the print job. So it'll take about two or three minutes to get to that point. Um, but once it does, the head will uh, move. It'll move away and then move back into position, and then it will uh, continue printing. And we've done that several times on this print. So I mean, it's it's really something unique that we've never seen happen on. We've never seen this happen on any other three D printer before. So, is it just you said it has a battery backup built in? So it, it basically detects the loss in power, figures out which line of G code it's lost yeah. on, and then right. it it goes to yeah. find that line of code when it starts back up and resumes. Correct. Yeah. yeah that, Absolutely. Yeah. It, it will take the position that it was in and it will do an orderly shutdown so that when the power comes back you can choose whether to recover it or abandon it because in some cases if you, your power was out for a very long time especially with like abs where it will want to warp as it gets cold that might just be a, a lost cause but in most cases if you lost power and you can recover the print even if you have small gaps or a shift it may still be a usable print so it's totally worth having that recovery feature very cool. And Eric, actually, if you can take a look at the uh, the user interface, because this is another great thing that I really like about the Raise 3D is 
the UI is very different from anything that I've seen before. So having the, it's just, it's nice, it's colorful, but it's easy to read. You can find everything. I mean, your, your nozzle temps, your heat bed temps, your print progress is also very, uh, very cool to see. Full color, a preview of the STL showing where it's at. Okay, so. The print selection panel right here. Um, but yeah, this is the main screen here, and this is where you can start and stop print if you wanted to do that. Uh, you can see that the uh, print head has moved to the uh, homing position so that it can, uh, it can figure out its uh, extruder position accurately so that it can restart at the correct location to uh, resume the print. So for a slicer, what does raise 3 d use? The uh, N-series machine takes standard G-code, um, but raise 3 d has their own slicer called Idea Maker and Idea Maker is optimized to handle really large prints. Um, but for people who have existing tools that they really like, if they like Cura or they like Slicer or if they like Simplify 3D, they can certainly use that. Uh, but Idea Maker has got all sorts of uh, bells and whistles. It's got mesh, uh, uh, mesh repair. It can do slicing and you know scaling, all the stuff that you can start to expect from everybody else. Um, and then it has the uh, wireless capability, uh, the remote operation capability, so that you can send files to the printer uh, via Wi-Fi and uh, print jobs that way. So it looks like it looks like now we have the print head starting to move slowly back to uh, back yeah, to the print. Pur purging the uh, nozzle in case uh, the plastic had cooked during the time that it was uh, sitting idle. But now you can see that it's resuming the print job. Yeah, I know no, that that is really incredible to see, and we're gonna wait and see it come around. Uh, wait and see it come around. It looks like everything's lined up exactly where it should be. So, yeah, this is very impressive stuff, Joseph. So, all right, thanks yeah, again. You did a great job. Yeah. It's awesome.